Hi, it's Richard from OneSite Solutions. Welcome to this online tutorial on um, basic components. Um, before we go into basic components, I just wanted to quickly show you the station. Now that we've opened, we've, sorry, we've, we have created the station and opened it. Uh, so in our nav sidebar here, we have the alarm, which if I double click on that will take me to, a it's just a shortcut to the alarm database. Nothing more than that. This is a uh, new with N4, only came out on N4. Um, config, which is really where we're going to do most of our work, create um, drivers you know, where we're interfacing backnet, Modbus, whatever uh, here, services, apps, which was for the old um, mobile apps, um, and files, which is a holding area really of um, all the files we're going to be using, whether it's files I've put there or we've put there, it could be sound files, uh, image files, PNGs, etc. Or it could be files that um, the station has created and put there as well. And then you have hierarchy and history. These are both viewing areas predominantly um, where we want to look at our histories. By default under histories, you would have the audit history and the log history anyway. Um, and also the hierarchy is a, a dynamic navigation area, Once we, but they have to be set up first. And we'll be talking about that in another video. So these two areas really are just viewing areas. Also on the history, there are different views if you right click on it for your database maintenance, etc. Um, so anyway, um, we're gonna, I'm just going to create a new folder underneath my config. So I've just right clicked on the config folder. I've gone to new and then there's an option there for a new folder. So I'm going to select that. Okay, it's my playground area. If I double click on that, it will take me to the top view of that folder, that type of component. Um, if I look at my top right, these, this is my different views I can have of that component. So by default, it's gone to my Wiresheet view, which is at the top of the list. Okay, and you've also got PX property sheets, sorry, AX property sheets, property sheet. Th this is an HTML5 page. This is the, anything with the AX in front of it is a, a Java uh, view of that object okay so this is my um wire sheet so if i want to add a point to my wire sheet i can just um there are a few things you can do from the right click menu by default uh, so if i say new um, and then i can add one of these objects so boolean writable numeric writable enum writable and a string writable they're there by default um, so i'm just going to add a boolean writable so i can give this a new name Okay, boiler fault. So if we go ahead and look at this component, um, you can see there's three slots that have been exposed on it by default. That's how it comes out of the palette or for my right click uh, menu. So uh, if, but what I can do is right click on this component and go to pin slots. And I could pin down all the slots here. And obviously that's gonna make it a much taller object. But just for this example, I, I just pin those down. So you can see all the different in and out slots there. Well, there's only one out slot. Um, and what it is, it's a table. Um, so if I double click on this component, you can see this is now looking at the AX property sheet. Um, you could change that to the uh, property sheet, which is an HTML5 view of it. So it's the same thing, really. Um, just uh, in the HTML5 format. I'm just going to change that back to the AX one because it's, it's a bit smaller and easier to see what I'm doing. Um, so the first thing at the top, we have facets. So I can change my facets. So at the moment, uh, we've got true and false. So if I click on these two uh, arrows here, I can go ahead and change um, my facets here. And uh, this here is a memory. So this is a memory. Uh, once we've started setting any up, I'll be able to click on that and it will it will remember that I've used these facets, fault and history. So I, in future, I could just click on that and it would save me a bit of time. Okay, so let's change my facets now. Um, I still have uh, nothing in my um, any of my in slots. So my out slot is still saying null. Um, so if I now go to my fallback area, at the bottom and give this a value. So if I unselect null and change this to a true value and then save it, 
you will see my out slot now is uh, is using this value from from the bottom of this table. Okay, and it's telling me on the line here that um, it's in fault and uh, it's at default. So at def means it's using this fallback value. So def is another name really for fallback. And there's also another um, name for it. If I right click on the component, wherever I do it uh, in my sidebar, if I do it here, I can get to the actions. So I can say action um, and then go to set. And I could just change that value from here. So if I go to healthy, you see it's changed here. So so my right clicks action set is another name for my fallback. It's also an, and and def is also another name for it. Okay, so a bit confusing, but there's actually three uh, names for this same uh, slot here at the bottom. Okay, so that's you can see now that it's got the ability to pass all the way through all these null values to the to the out slot. So that's how this table works. Um, so I could go to another slot here. So if I went to 13 and change this to um, a true, which will be my uh, fault status if I refresh that. And you can see now this uh, table is now saying it's using in slot 13. Um, if I look at in slot 13, I've got a fault value there. And it's overriding this value because it's higher in the table and, and, and it's able to pass through all these null values. Um, so if I just release that again, put it back to null. So now it's uh, using the fallback again. You might notice there's a few, or a couple at least, three values, so three slots here, in slot one, in slot six, and in slot eight, that don't give me the option to, um, to override them uh, by choosing these drop-down arrows. Um, but what they are, they're, they are actually a right click function. Well, at least slot eight and slot one are both uh, a right click action. So if I go back and do uh, action uh, active, you can see there it's using slot eight. So slot eight is actually my override. And it's, it's telling me as well on my out slot that it's being overridden and it's using slot eight. If I go look at my wire sheet now, you can see um, it's got a purple line. So the purple means that it's been over, overridden, whether it's slot eight or slot one. Because slot one is the other one. So if I go actions, emergency, inactive, you can see now it's uh, changed. It's using now slot one, uh, if you can see here, uh, at one. So it's overriding my override. The emergency override has got prior priority over all the other slots. So to release them, I can just say um, for my emergency one, I have to go to emergency auto. That will release slot one. Now it's using slot eight. To release slot eight, I have to go to the auto. So now it's going to go back to my fallback. Okay. Um, there's one other slot there, uh, which is slot six, um, which is using these values at the bottom. This min and in min active time and min inactive time. So if I put a value in here, say 15 seconds, and if I now um, change my um, fallback value to true, sorry, clicked the wrong thing. So I'll make it active now. So you can see there, um, it's gone to fault on, on my override because I over, overrode it. Um, and slot six is going to be uh, on for at least 15 seconds. So if I quickly go back to my make it inactive, oh, it wasn't quick enough, but uh, what happened there, that stayed active for uh, 15 seconds. Um, so it, it will override slot um, any any slot below it. So if you're going to use that functionality, you have to make sure it's over, it's, it uses slot six. So any, any other overrides you want need to be either below that or above it, depending on what you want to do. Okay, um, so that's really, uh, if I show you a numeric writable, so this might be my sensor. I'll just put sensor in there for now. Um, if I double click on it, you can see it's very similar. The only difference really is it doesn't have at the bottom those inactive and active times. To, uh, so slot six is available to be able to link into. 
um, <clears throat> or, or change from here. But apart from that, it's very similar. Um, the facets obviously will be different. Um, and now when we left click on this, uh, this double arrow, we get this config facets box up, which is looking for a unit. If I click on these three dots, I can now choose what kind of units I want to use on this object. So temperature, and then I can choose Celsius on there. And this is my precision. This is how many um, decimal points there be. And if I wanted to use this as a set point or something, I could clamp my min and maximum values as well. Um, I'll just say OK there. So you can see now it's using degree C. Um, but I haven't got any values in there. So my right click on the on the component. I can go to actions and go to my set and give this a value now. So it's using 21 degrees C. And so my insulate 8, when I do the override this time, I've actually got a, 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 um, a right click option called override. I can just give this another uh, value there. So the same thing happens. I still get the purple line when it's overridden. I can right click on it and clear that by going to auto. Okay, so I can now do so that's that's really the only difference between a numeric value and a boolean value. Um, I can let's just put that back to auto as well. Um, if I duplicate my sensor now by right clicking and saying duplicate, it will automatically add a number onto the end of, of this value of this name, I should say, because you can't have two objects with the same name on the same folder okay you can see in this priority uh, in this um property sheet of the folder you can't have two objects called sensor okay um so um if i wanted to change the name of these two objects i could select both of them just by left clicking and highlight uh, selecting them both and then uh, unclicking I can now right click on it and say rename, or I could do a control R. And now I could change the name of this. So I could look for the word sensor and change it with um, temperature. Oh, sorry. And you can see the results here. So this is the old value, and I'm going to replace it with temperature sensor one. And you can see it's changed both of those values now. So you can multi-select as many components as you want and change the names accordingly. Um, so uh, linking, if I wanted to link my boiler one fault to something else, so if I just put another value on here, I don't need to change that just for this example. Um, I can just link at, from my out slot. So you have to make sure you can't select from this side and drag it around. It won't let you uh, do it that way. So um, even though it is one slot, you have to Im uh, imagine an invisible line down the middle. You can only um, select, you can only link from the right hand side of this component to the left hand side of this component. So I could just link like that. That's nice and simple. Um, if I right click and say delete, that would delete the, the highlighted area. If I wanted to, to um, if I was linking this from one uh, folder to another folder, I'd have to use something called link mark. So I could right click on it, say link mark, and then uh, go to the other object that I want to link to, and and then choose link mark from. And it's telling me where I, what's been uh, copied into it. So I can now ball a fault. That's this uh, component. Select the out slot. And it will show me what available slots I can use. So again, in slot 10, and it will do the same thing. Just link over to in slot 10. Um, the other way of doing it is if you weren't sure what slots you want to select, you can just connect these two white boxes together, and you get the same kind of wizard where it allows you to do the same thing. Um, you can also multi-select. Um, let me just duplicate that again. So if I wanted to multi-link, I could um, I could select both of these now and say link from. I can still select ball of fault is still in its memory, so I can just say link from ball of fault, um, and again select what slots to link, and it's selected both of these this time. Okay, so uh, the other thing was uh, paste special. 
So if I, if I didn't want to use duplicate, if I had say five of these to do, I could do a copy. So I'll copy this component and use paste special. Um, and now I can say how many more I want to add. So I add another four. If I wanted to keep the links, I could and relations as well. And you can see now it's linked to all these points as well. And um, as you can see, it's also renamed them all as well, with, just by adding a number onto the end. So a nice quick way of um, duplicating, if you like. Um, so uh, just to show you an, an object from the palette also. Um, so to open, if we wanted to get to uh, some control components or logic components, etc., um, you need to open a palette. So to open a palette, um, you can click on this sidebar, go to the sidebar options, and select palette. Okay, so this is my palette area, and if I click on open palette with this little folder here, there's uh, quite a lot of options here to choose from. Um, we're going to be looking at one called kit control. So if I type in the filter kit, you can see all my kit um, palettes here. I'm going to use one called kit control. So some of these are for um, wire sheets and some are working on a canvas, which is where we do our graphics. And you can see now um, I've got an option of different folders here. So I want, to, I want to add an average module to work out the average of these two components here. Let me just change that one to a different value so you can see it is working. Okay, so to so it's obviously going to be a math object, um, and I'm looking for average. So to add the average, I just drag it on and let, release it onto the wire sheet. I don't double click it. If I double click on it, it will take me to the property sheet of that object there. Okay, so now I can now link these two to the average, and you can see that's working 23 degrees. Um, if I wanted to, if I looked at this average module and I wanted to use the same facets, I can now use my history and go to the last facet that I chose, which is degree C. You can see that's nice and quick now. I don't have to go and, and select it again. Okay, so that's really it for this, um, this lab. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, subscribe at the bottom if you have, and don't forget to visit us on our website as well. Um, and see you soon.